My name is Katie Banks and I'm going to teach you guys how to meal plan. This is super handy from week to week, especially being in college and on a budget. Let's get started. So the very first thing that we're going to do is open up our fridge, our freezer, and our pantry. We're going to take an inventory of what's in each so that we don't end up buying something at the store that we already have on hand. So the reason we want to look at things in our fridge, not only to stay on budget, but to look at the expiration date. Things like eggs, things like cheese, obviously these go bad really fast. So we want to look, make sure that they're not expired, and if they are, throw them out and be sure to add them to your grocery list. Along with checking the expiration dates in your fridge, it's also important to check the expiration dates on things in your pantry. Common things such as rice, canned goods, things like peanut butter, things that you use in everyday meals. It's important to check these expiration dates so that if they're bad, then you can also add these to your grocery list. All right, y'all, now it's time to get to the fun part. We're actually gonna start writing out and making our plan. But hold on, there's a couple things that you need to keep in mind and that I'm gonna talk to you about really fast. First of all, you need to know how often you're gonna be going shopping. If you're gonna be shopping for things like apples, you know, your fruits, your vegetables, your meat, your cheese, your milk, things that are gonna go bad fast, you're probably gonna be shopping closer to weekly. However, if you shop for things that are more processed or packaged, you might be able to stretch out your shopping to monthly or bi-weekly. However, whatever your schedule allows for, you're going to want to keep that in mind because I'm going to be showing you how to make a weekly plan based on the foods that I usually get, but it's definitely possible to take all of these tips and tricks into making a monthly plan. Whatever works for you, just keep all of that in mind. You also want to take into consideration that you're gonna have events going on that's gonna cause your planning to be a little bit funky sometimes. This can include classes, going out, traveling, having people over, and things like that. Things that you typically don't really think about, but things I want you to think about. Classes, if you have a heavy day at school, you're probably gonna wanna come home and relax. You're not gonna feel like making food. So if you know for a fact that Tuesdays are a heavy day, Make that day a day that you go out for food or you have leftovers or you make it something super simple to make. If you're going out, say it's a Friday night football game, well, nine times out of ten you're going to be eating fast food that day. So don't plan to buy food for that day and don't plan to make food for that day. These two kind of go hand in hand, although they are opposites of each other. If you're traveling, you're not going to want to buy a ton of food for that week because obviously you're not going to be home to eat it. Opposite, if you're having people over, you're going to want to plan for a little bit of extra food because you're going to want to feed those people. Now, on top of all of this, you need to make a day and a time that you're going to make your plan. For me, I always plan the next week worth of food on Fridays. Then, Saturdays are my days to shop. I go super early before everybody gets there. Just makes it super simple. Planning on Friday, shopping on Saturday. This is something that you need to figure out because if you don't have it figured out, it's going to be a mess. It's not going to be organized. You're not going to have any idea of what you're doing. So make it a point to sit down, give yourself a half hour, plan out your foods, look in your pantry, look in your fridge, in your freezer, see what you have, plan out your, your week and your meals, and just get it over with. Then next day, go shopping, get those things, and get ready for the week coming up because it's going to be full of great food because you did your best at planning so here we go all right so what you're going to see pop up on the screen is a blank meal plan and you're going to watch me fill this out as i talk to you so one of the very first things i always put on my meal plan is a little star and that just tells me that this is the day i'm going to go shopping so that's when i know i can start my day out so as you can see here i'm going to be putting that on saturday as i told you earlier because Saturdays are my day to shop. Next thing that we're gonna move to is our breakfasts. I usually plan all of my breakfasts for the week in one shot, and then I will plan lunch and dinner together, and I'll show you why that is in a minute. But first, let's start with breakfast. What I do is for each week, I'll pick three different breakfasts that I wanna eat that week. I do this for a couple of reasons. First of all, it helps me to get lots of nutrients. If I'm not eating the same thing every day, I can kind of vary my foods and vary my nutrient intake, that type of thing. So just a health nut type thing. Second, again, that I kind of already said, but I don't have to eat the same thing every day. Unless it's the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, I don't really like to eat the same thing over and over again day to day. I pick three meals that I will 
alternate throughout the week. So starting on Saturday, this week I decided to have a bagel and cream cheese and usually what I'll do for one of my meals is put it on Saturdays and Sundays. This is usually the meal that's hardest for me to make or the most time consuming. Obviously a bagel and cream cheese isn't hard, but it is time consuming. So this is going to be the breakfast that I'm going to have Saturday and Sunday. And obviously it's so good. Bagels and cream cheese, perfect. Anyways, okay, so that's my first breakfast. Get that out of the way. Next, I decided this week for my medium difficulty breakfast was going to be a yogurt parfait or just some yogurt, I usually like the Greek vanilla kind, um, some fruit, and then some granola. So all of those three together make a great nutritional breakfast, definitely a filling one as well. That one I'm going to be putting on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Then my third breakfast, and the one that is the easiest to make and the least time consuming is Cheerios with milk as well as a protein bar. So this one's going to go on Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, the reason for this one is that Tuesdays and Fridays I usually need to get out the door a little bit quicker than I do on the rest of the days. So it's easy for me to throw down some cereal before I leave and then I'll usually take the protein bar with me and eat it in the car. That kind of thing. So again you can see I have three meals this week that I rotated between um, the Wednesday and Thursday is repeated. but. You know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. You try your best. So for the most part, I'm rotating them through and it just gives me some variety throughout the week. This next part might be a little bit confusing, so try and stay with me. It's my process. It's something that I kind of just created by myself, so I hope it makes sense to y'all. But what I do is I plan lunches and dinners together. Usually I'll pick two different meat sources. This week it's going to be beef and chicken. So I shopped on Saturday, so obviously we're going to be starting our day or our week on Saturday. So lunch, I'm going to be having tacos. Dinner, I'm going to be having spaghetti. So both of these include beef. So I usually buy and cook between four and six pounds of meat. That might sound like a lot, but it usually lasts me forever. So what I do is I usually try and start with two meals um, on the same day, so that's Saturday, that include the same meat. So Saturday I'm going to be cooking my beef, and I'm going to be putting half of it towards my tacos, or like my leftover taco stuff, and then half of it I'm going to be putting towards my spaghetti, and the leftovers for spaghetti. So my thing is it's a similar process to breakfast. I pick three meals throughout the week to rotate between. Um, varying a little bit. So, Saturday, tacos and spaghetti, both including beef. So I'll cook both of those, lunch and dinner, have them, and then put my leftovers in the fridge. The next day, so now we're to Sunday, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lunch from the previous day, so we're taking lunch from Saturday, and we're moving that to dinner to the current day. So I always just take whatever I had for lunch yesterday, it's now in the dinner spot. Visualize it, see what's on my plan. Now, that dinner that we had yesterday, we're gonna not have that today. We're just gonna pretend like it doesn't exist. Instead, remember how I said there's three meals? We're gonna take that third meal and we're gonna cook it today, Sunday. Saturdays and Sundays are the days that I have the most time to cook things. So that third meal that I'm choosing to have this week is chicken fried rice. So that's my second meat option is chicken this week. So, introducing that third meal for lunch now on Sunday, I'm going to be having that third meal. So Sunday, chicken fried rice for lunch and tacos for dinner. Now, we're going to just repeat the process. We have all three meals cooked. Now we're just going to be eating leftovers. I personally like leftovers because I think they taste just as good warmed up in the microwave. Sometimes they're even better. And on top of that, still nutritionally dense and it keeps time to a minimum just super easy i prefer leftovers but however here's a plug for a tip is if you don't prefer leftovers and you would just prefer to cook something new every single day that can get tough because you do usually buy things that are meant for more than one meal but if you do go to pinterest and you look up healthy one person meals or just one person meals that kind of thing 
You can definitely find recipes where you can just cook different things each day because it only provides one serving. So for me personally, we're going to be doing leftovers. That's how I'm going to be doing my meal planning. That's what I'm showing y'all. But if you'd prefer to do something different, there's definitely options out there. Remember that I mentioned earlier that there's going to be nights that we're going out and there's going to be nights that we have um, people over, that kind of stuff. So maybe some of these nights you don't have leftovers. So as you can see for this week, I planned um, for Friday night um, to not have dinner because there was an event going on. Um, so Friday night I did not plan anything. And then Tuesday for lunch, I went out to lunch with my friends. So, I mean, there's definitely a couple areas in there that you can leave blank because you know that you're not going to have dinner or lunch that day. So now that we have our plan completely made up, we're going to go back through it. We're going to recall from our little memory bank up here what we had in our pantry and everything. And we're going to write down on our grocery section at the bottom what all we need to get at this store. So I'm going to go back through my plan, make sure I don't miss anything, write all the groceries that I need, and then I can take a picture of it on my way to the store because then I know for a fact I'm not going to like add something later and then forget to take another picture. So write all your groceries down, get everything that you need, and call it a meal plan. The final thing that I want to talk about with you guys is how much cheaper it can be to eat at home and to stay on your meal plan and to stay within your budget. So as you can see down at the bottom, I calculated the groceries that I'm gonna need to be buying and just how much it would cost me to get those at Walmart. So comparing this amount to an amount that it would take to go out every single night for fast food or to a restaurant, you can clearly see that if I were to stick to this meal plan, then I would be spending very little money for the amount of food that I would be getting and the amount of energy I would be getting from that food. So meal plans are super helpful because you aren't going and walking through the store and just buying all of these things and just thinking, wow, this looks good and wow, this looks good. And then getting home and being like, well, I can't make a cohesive meal with this because usually when I do that at the store, it just never ends up matching. Like I get peanut butter and then I get pasta and I'm like, well, I don't think these two go together. So definitely helps out in that area if you have a meal plan. Helps you to save money because you're not just buying so many random things. Keeps you on track. You can definitely also balance your meals um, if you know that you need so many grams of protein and so many grams of carbs each day. You can plan that out. You can get really, really specific with meal plans and you can get very general but still use the benefits of a meal plan. So I hope this video was super helpful. I know that there's so much that I didn't talk about. Meal planning is just amazing. I highly recommend it if you don't do it. It's definitely fun. It's a challenge. It's kind of like a puzzle, piecing everything together. If you want to stay on budget and you want to work towards a goal of keeping yourself on a plan, then I highly suggest it. So thank you guys for watching and peace out.